Hi, I'm Ricky. Welcome to episode 40 of our Endless Tunnel series. Today we see bug fixing. If you've ever made a video game, you will know that bug fixing is never over. So this episode will tackle most problems that we have in our game, but it's very likely there will be another episode in the future where I'll cover all the bugs that I haven't found out yet. So if there are some errors in my project and you found them, don't be shy, tell me in the comments. I remember you can always download the entire project for free from GitHub, link in the description. All right, let's start with something very, very quick. When we meet an NPC, we set the time scale to zero and that blocks all effects in game. Time scale also affects animations though. So we have to make sure that animations are independent from time scales if said animations somehow interfere with the gameplay. In our case, that's the lighting panel. Let's go into our canvas, game panel, lighting animation panel. And let's change update mode from normal to unscaled time. This way the lighting will still go off even if we pause the game or even if we talk to an NPC. If a lighting happened while we're talking to an NPC, this would happen and wouldn't be able to talk to the NPC and go through. All right, and now let's go to the biggest offender of the list, and that is the boot movement. Let's select our player, let's open boot movement. This is one of the very first scripts that we've made in this series, so it's not a surprise that there are some errors in here. I apologize for the errors, but we'll look through them and fix them now. All right, so the majority of the script happens in fixed update. And in here, we're taking the inputs on the player, and based on the inputs and some values, we are changing our velocity. There are a couple of things that are wrong here. Well, more than a couple, actually. The first is that we should take inputs only inside the update method, not the fixed update. Things like input that get key, they may not work very well inside the fixed update. You should always split the script into two parts, one to take the input and one to actually handle the physics. And you should take the inputs in the update method and do the physics in the fixed update method. The reason for that is a bit complicated, but basically those two functions behave differently and fixed update is meant specifically for handling physics, so you should use that for handling physics. I'm not gonna go any deeper than that, it's a long journey. In our case though, it doesn't really matter because we are using reachbody.velocity which, yeah, uses physics, but it's not adding any force to our object. We are setting the velocity manually. Because of that, we can actually just change this function from fixed update to update. And you can see that it's behaving exactly the same. The other thing that we should change is fixed data time. I said before that we should use fixed data time in fixed update and delta time inside update. So it makes sense to do this. But actually, when you set the velocity manually of an object, so with dot velocity, we shouldn't use neither time dot data time nor time dot fix data time. If we didn't remove time dot delta time or fix data time, we would have a different speed based on the frame rate. So different devices would have a different boot speed. And of course, we don't want some people to have their boot be faster while some others they have it slower. You should add those values only if you are adding force incrementally, like with add force. So in this case, we can remove those. And before we go any further, there are some other things I want to change, but first we have to fix the values. Because time dot delta time is a very small value, it's almost zero, and because we have removed it, it means that now we have to lower all the speed values of our boat. So let's go back to Unity, and instead of 250, let's put three. And you can see it's basically the same as before. If I set it to 250, however, I, yeah, I basically teleport to the other side of the screen. There are two other values that we have to change. Those are the wind and the weird wind. Let's go to the wind first. So game manager, wind, and instead of 25, 75, let's say 0 0.25 and two. While for the weird wind, we have to select the prefab. And again, let's set a very small value like one and three, and that should do it. Of course, you can always fine tune this value to whatever you prefer. Back to the script. All right, and while we're here, let's also factorize some of this code. So from if application.isEditor all the way down here, this is where we take the inputs of the player and where we rotate it. So let's actually cut it and pass it in a new function. And instead of making it void, let's make it return an integer and that's gonna be the direction of our input. So let's also create direction X here. Uh, let's just call direction X, I think it's clear. And then let's also return direction X right at the end. And let's also handle the rotation outside of the function. So 
let me take this out and pass it here and let's worry about that later for now let's remove all the transform rotation inside this function and while I'm here I'm also going to delete the unnecessary brackets alright much better and finally this is one of the very first bugs in our game that is a touch position let's change this from an X to a Y this is the position of our finger on the screen I want to read the Y position of our finger to know whether our finger is below the pause button because if a player is trying to pause we don't want him to also move the boat all right now back in update let's set the direction X to take input and now let's multiply our rotation C for direction X remember that direction X is 1 if we want to move to the right and minus 1 if we want to move to the left and 0 if you don't do anything. Minus 30 is the rotation of the boat when it looks on the right. So it makes sense to multiply it with direction x to get our correct transform rotation. And that's it. Let's go back to Unity. The boat movement still works, even with the wind. And we're winds as well. Finally, there's another place where we are changing the boat speed, and that is with the oars item. Here in South Script, we are taking the stronger oars level and multiplying it by 50 to increase the boat speed's value. Instead, let's use 0.25. So by level 10, we will almost double our initial speed. Of course, you fine tune it however you want. All right, and now that we've done the boot movement, let's do the tutorial boot movement. So let's go to the tutorial scene, boot player, boot tutorial movement. The movement that we have in here is very similar to the one that we have in our level, except that we don't set the velocity for the wind and whirlwind. So you can actually just go back to your boat movement and copy the update and the take point function as well and replace them with the fixed update that is in here and now we just need to remove this bit of code here for the wind and wind and we're good to go back to unity let's set the boat speed to 3 here as well and you can see that it still works very nicely all right and next up let's fix something that's been bothering me for a while now and that is the camera's projection if you notice, in our normal level, our main camera is set to orthographic, and that is correct because we are trying to render a 2D world. It's a bit more complicated than that, but usually you use orthographic for 2D and perspective for 3D. So our main level is correct. The problem is with the other scenes. Our scene manager doesn't have a camera, so it doesn't matter. Choose language doesn't have a camera, but we are not rendering anything other than UI, so it doesn't matter. Although just for the sake of it, let's put it to orthographic main menu we have a main camera it is rendering some 2d sprites so the projections matters and in this case you see that we set it to perspective which is wrong let's set it to orthographic by setting it to orthographic it has zoomed out a bit we just need to take this boat one and move it a bit out of the screen and everything else is exactly the same and in the tutorial scene we have a camera that is rendering some 2d stuff so yeah, you can see that we kept it to perspective, so let's change it to orthographic. And I'm also noticing that we set the camera's position Y to 1. That's not correct. That's better. And now we also have to fix the boots animation. So boot player, animation. And before we change the animation, make sure preview is off. Let's also decrease a bit the X. All right, so it fits uh, the screen. I'm going to copy the size. And now inside the animation, let's hit record. And let's fix it here too. That should do it. Yep, let's see how it looks in game. All right, uh, the only thing, the hook of the pirate was a bit off. Let me see it again here. Yeah, it's a bit too up. Let's bring it down a notch. Let's see how the animation looks. All right, that's fine. We can turn off everything again. All right, that is better. Perfect. Next up in our level scene, let's select the boot player. Here we have our lantern. Let's open it. In here we turn on the lantern UI panel and we turn off the fog whenever we have enough fuel available for the lantern. We actually forgot to do so in a part of the code. So let me copy the fog sprite. And you see here when we tick the lantern, we swap the lantern and the fox sprites, but we also have to do this whenever we get some new fuel. 
which happens in here. If you already have some fields, then we don't want to do anything. But if you don't have any, then we want to turn on the lantern and turn off the fog. Quick fix, but needed. Next up, let's open the entities magazine. And here we have a static value for entities in game. And it doesn't really make sense to have a static value inside another static instance of a script. So we can just remove that. Let's go back to Unity. And we're gonna get an error in the console telling us that we forgot to put a reference somewhere. Here in the spawn manager, instead of addressing the entities in game directly, we just have to call the singleton first. And that's it. Finally, two very minor things, which we may well not do. Those are the names of the entities class and the achievements types. Let's open Entities Magazine. And you can see that the script isn't actually called Entities Magazine, it's actually called Entities Magazine. You can't just fix the name directly, you have to follow this procedure. In Unity, find the file of your script, rename the file name, and copy the new name. Only after you've renamed it, double click it to open it, and change the class name here. If you do it in some other way, you may get some errors, you may get some duplicate files, so make sure you always rename the file first and the class later. And now that we've changed this class name, we are of course gonna get a lot of errors in the console. To fix them is very easy, make sure you always clear the console before you do any of this. Double click on an error and pass the new class name. I'm gonna do this the same for all the other errors. All right, and the second minor bug, it's also related to naming, but that's for an enum. Let's open the achievement script. And here you can see that I made a typo for achievement. If you have a lot of values in your game that are serialized with the achievement type, make sure you make a backup of your game before you change the enum name, because all your serialized values may get reset. I'm gonna do it anyway and not worry about it, because again, this is just a sample project. And now that we've changed the name, of course, like before, we have to fix all the errors in the console. It's always the same procedure, so I'm not gonna show it to you. And that's it. There will probably be a new video in the future about bug fixing, but those that I showed you were the bugs that I knew about. If there are some that I didn't put here, make sure to tell me. You can always join my Discord channel to get help with programming, and you can also follow me on Twitter to get updates on what I'm doing. Right now, I'm also developing a new game for PC. It's called AA, and there's a teaser trailer and a gameplay video, all links in the description. All right, and make sure, of course, to like, subscribe, share the video, ring the notification bell and all that stuff, and I'll see you next time. See ya.